the huge black tape. Okay, it's a racer. Oh, check that out. It's a little ribbon snake. I don't see anything. You can also get snakes that'll hide. This is really cool. Oh, check this out. That's a new snake. On today's adventure, we're in Central Florida, and we're going to be looking for some snakes in a few different locations today. First on our list is a very sandy scrub oak biome. This is a good place to spot snakes basking out in the open, especially midday. This is a huge black snake. Okay, it's a racer. It's a racer. Hello, buddy. Hello, oh, boy. Have a look at this. That's a big racer. I was kind of hoping that would be an indigo at first, because uh, indigos are a huge black snake that live out here, and this is a big racer. Kind of fat, not super long, but definitely a fat one. Now this looks like a really, really old snake because it's got loads of scars, faded color. Racers are pretty defensive snakes, so they will try and bite, and he's looped over his own body right there. They're mostly going to be eating little lizards and all kinds of stuff like that out here. They will eat, they will eat some rodents. All right, well, he's a little bit crazy, so I think I'm going to put him down in a second. <laughs> he is doing his best to try and bite me. Hey, bud. Yeah, definitely an old snake looking at him. He's got very faded colors. And in actual fact, this might actually be a mix. I'm seeing he's got a lot black, a lot of black around his eyes. This might be a mix between a, uh, a black mast racer, otherwise known as a blue racer, and a black. I'm also noticing he's got a big bulky head, which is uh, pretty interesting. They technically can mix, however it doesn't happen too often. So uh, you know, racer snakes are super common. He's probably going to come at my face in a second unless I put him down, so I'm going to go ahead and put him down. Alright, there you go, bud. Off you get. Oh, check that out. Nope. Look at this. It's a little ribbon snake. Pull it up right there. Come here, little buddy. Sit right under that. Have a look at this little dude. This is a ribbon snake. This is a really common species. We find these in Louisiana too. And uh, they're really prevalent out here in these little piney oak areas. They eat lizards, little fish, non-venomous of course. And uh, they technically are a species of garter snake. However, compared to the eastern garter, they're like a little skinny, skinny version. And that's why they're called a ribbon snake. They're little and thin, like this. Now this is definitely not a full grown one, but this is oftentimes how you're going to find them. This, about this size. Now, ribbon snakes have really good camouflage in pine needles. These lines help them camouflage really well in that. And mostly they're going to be trying to eat little fish, frogs, lizards. You'll find them in little wet spots all the time, just like water snakes. They're actually really, really good swimmers. And in actual fact, there's blue variants of this snake. So you can literally get blue ribbon snakes, which is really, really cool. Now, they give birth to live young. They don't lay any eggs, which that's another cool thing about garter snakes in general, is that they don't lay eggs. They have live birth. Non-venomous, not trying to bite me. Sometimes they'll musk on you when you pick them up, but this one didn't. And I'm going to put his log back and put him right underneath that. Watch this. Ready? I'm going to slide right under that. Come check this out. It's a little rat snake. He looks angry. Look at him. He's making a little diamond-shaped head and everything. Hello. Don't go into the palmettos, buddy. Whoop, whoop. Oh, he's, he's flying. He's not happy. He's not happy. He's trying to bite me. That's pretty typical of a rat snake. Well, this would be, technically speaking, that this would be a gray rat. Uh, if I were to find one of these in Louisiana, I'd call it a Texas rat. But if you look at its tongue, it's got a black tongue. And technically speaking, when they have a black tongue like that, ah, that's all right, bud. Then it would be a gray and not, not a Texas. Man, he is upset. Look at that. Even when I walked up to him, he was posturing and making, making himself look like a venomous snake. They kind of spread out the sides of their necks to kind of make it look like there's a venom gland there. Now here in Florida, they'll also get what I call a white oak rat, which is basically a very, very white version of the snake. And as this snake grows up, I'm guessing he's going to turn a more brownish color. He is upset. Look at him. He's very upset with me. It's all right, bud. Normally the babies are pretty mild-tempered for me, but he's pretty crazy. 
Rat snakes are a very common species, and we have a lot of different rat snakes across North America, and in fact in other countries. A lot of people don't realize, but there's Japanese rat snakes as well, and there's a few more that are found in Indonesia that I'm not super familiar with. But I am very familiar with the rat snakes that live in North America, and uh, this is one that I've actually found before. It's kind of cool. They also get yellow rat snakes, and uh, Everglades rat snakes, which is just a darker orange colored yellow rat, and then what you're also going to get is what they call a red rat snake. And the more common name for that is the corn snake. And that's one of my favorite snakes to find. It'd be really cool to find one while we're out here. But uh, this guy's pretty cool too. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let him go because he is really not happy with me. Here you go, bud. Back in your palmetto. This is where he was heading, so that's where I'm going to put him. Watch this. The snakes we're seeing so far are mostly ones we've been able to find in the past. So we're heading to our next location to try and track down something new. We were told that there were some cave systems not super far from here, so I figured it would be a good idea to check it out and see if there's anything to be found in the area. Somebody told us around here, not far from where we were a minute ago, that there was a cave down here. And uh, this is just a little small section of it. But a uh, totally different environment than we were in a minute ago. We were in kind of more of a sand hill area, whereas this is a lot more lush, a lot more water, and there's caves, which is pretty cool. I went and got my headlight and uh, I might peek down here a little bit. Might be some spiders, salamanders, and uh, maybe even some mammals that'll hide down here. So uh, it's pretty cool. Might take a look at some of the other cave systems around here as well and see if there's anything that we can find around them. So we've got spider webs, lots of different minerals. It's pretty cool. And you can see down here, this is where a larger animal could come and sit. Right down here. And it's nice and cool right now compared to what's up there. But in the winter time, this would actually be warmer than what's up there. I don't see anything. You can also get snakes that'll hide. Not any signs of life too much, other than a few spiders. But uh, we still might find something. This is really cool. No luck at the caves. So we're moving on to a more lowland environment that'll hopefully have some of Florida's more aquatic snakes. I'm really hoping to find something new that I've never seen before while on this trip. I tell you what, this area is a lot more waterlogged than where we just were. Uh, lots of little streams and stuff going through here. Magnolia, cypress, uh, completely different environment. And uh, no telling what we'll actually find here. We have had a pretty decent day so far, but the sun is going down right now. So uh, I'm hoping we can find something new in the amount of time that we've got left before the sun goes down. There's a water snake. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that little dude. This is a diamondback water snake. Just kind of sitting out in the open. This is a very common species here. Now this actually grows to be the largest water snake species here in North America. And uh, this would be a medium sized one. They do get bigger than this. We've shown quite a few of these guys in the past before. And uh, if you look at their belly, got a lightish yellow color. Very common species. They also get brown water snakes here. And uh, they're pretty similar. Just a little bit of a different patterning and a different looking face. Now water snakes, like their name suggests, spend most of their time by the water. Now we saw a second ago they will try and bite you if you handle them, but this is a non-venomous species and uh, they oftentimes get mixed up with the venomous water moccasin. Very similar looking snake and uh, you know, diamondbacks have a similar pattern to young moccasins so a lot of people will confuse this snake for that. Oftentimes you'll see these guys on golf courses and along little streams and places like that so it's something that people pretty oftentimes run into. Alright, we're going to go ahead and let this little guy go and uh, see if we can find a new snake. Go. Go on, buddy. Oh, check this out. That's a new snake. Hang on. If you're what I think you are, come here. Sit in the little log. What are you? Okay. Here we go. This is definitely a snake I've never found before. Well, that's all right, little buddy. This right here is a crawfish snake, and I believe that this is a glossy crawfish snake. Look at that little dude. I've actually never found one of these snakes before. He's really, really cool. Now, the reason they're called crawfish snakes is actually because they only eat crawfish, which is pretty insane. Now, you might be wondering, how would a snake eat a crawfish? They only eat crawfish while they're molting. Basically, if you've heard of a soft shell crab, it's when a crab molts. And it's the same thing for most arthropods that shed their skin. And uh, basically what you're gonna get is a soft shell crawfish after, after they molt, 
that's the only time that a crawfish snake can actually eat a crawfish. So it's pretty specialized in what it eats. Now of course this is a non-venomous species and they do get about two to three times the size but this would not be a baby right here and uh, you can find them this size normally. This would technically be like a sub-adult. It's got a kind of like a yellowish chin and a solid black top. There's a couple other different species of crawfish snake and the reason I can tell that this is a glossy is because of that solid black top. Have a look at this. He's kind of flattening out his body. It's really interesting. He's like flattening out his entire body similar to like what water snakes do. Look at that. He's like trying to pull off what a cobra does with no hood. It's really funny. Non-aggressive, wouldn't try to bite me. Did musk on me a little bit, but that's fine. This is a very, very cool snake. I'm not sure how rare they are in this area. I know I've really never found them, but uh, they're supposedly common snakes in the areas that they're found in. This snake is very similar to the swamp snake, and really I wouldn't compare them to anything like a water snake or a mud snake or anything like that. They're kind of their own little thing. It's got a cool looking face, and it's just a very special snake overall. Not sure how rare they are though. It's just really cool to be able to see one of these for the first time, and uh, the only time I've ever seen these guys is in books. Now right now they'd be kind of hunkering down for the winter, but this snake tends to spend its winter times out in the open. They don't go under stuff, you'll oftentimes see them coiled up at the bases of trees, and uh, at the bases of logs, or even up in the marsh. You oftentimes see these guys in the marshes, but they're pretty difficult to spot. One of the reasons that most people don't see this snake much. Now these snakes are mostly nocturnal and you can see they've got actually huge buggy eyes for a snake this size and uh, that's normally what you're going to see on crawfish snake, even the Graham's crawfish snake, which I'm not sure if those are more prevalent here. Uh, in Louisiana I'm pretty sure that the Graham's crawfish snake is a little bit more common than the glossy. And the glossy is definitely my favorite because of that solid black top. It kind of reminds me of a mud snake because it's got a very specific diet and that solid black coloration. He's got a really cool looking belly. If you see that there, he's got kind of greenish lines on the belly with a yellowish coloration. It's a very, very unique snake species and not one that you're going to hear talked about a lot. Even though they're found all throughout the southern parts of North America, you'll find them through Louisiana all the way down into Florida. And the Everglades is a really good place to encounter these snakes. And uh, normally down there you're going to see them a little bit bigger than this. Now I can actually tell that he's eaten recently. He's got a little lump right here in his belly. And uh, of course I could guarantee that that would be a crawfish because that is the only thing that this snake eats. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like. And I will see you guys next time. Alright, we're going to let this little snake go.